today, we have the first benchmark on AMD's Ryzen 3D, final performance of next-gen GPUs, NVIDIA's RTX 4000 cards are right around the corner, NVIDIA's new GPU is a power hog, and their first CPU is an absolute monster. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, we have one of the first third-party benchmarks on AMD's upcoming Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Remember that it's set to be one of AMD's first mainstream CPUs built with their 3D V-Cache, set for release on April 20th. Either way, the part was benchmarked on Geekbench, and as you can see, it got a single-core score of 1633 and a multi-core score of 11,250. When we compare that to the regular 5800X, you can see that it got a lower single-core score, which is to be expected given it has lower clocks. What's really interesting is that it actually got a 9% higher multi-core score, and that matters because the new part was mostly meant to give an uplift in gaming, not more general multi-core scenarios like Geekbench so it's interesting to see it get a decent boost here as well. I'm assuming this is due to the faster talk between chiplets thanks to the huge amount of L3 cache. Of course, having a lower single core score could hurt some workloads. Ultimately, I think we'll have to wait and see how it does in gaming, and how it compares to Intel's 12th gen. Time, as always, will tell. But first, a huge shout out to this video's sponsor, World of Warships, the free-to-play PC game that puts you in command of your own warship. In fact, they now have over 400 historically accurate ships to choose from across multiple classes. I'm talking destroyers, battleships, aircraft carriers, or if you feel like diving under the water, they even have submarines. And with over 40 gorgeous maps to choose from, there's something for everyone. Plus, they're constantly adding new content every month. I'm talking new ships, in-game nations, cosmetics, and more. No wonder they've got more than 44 million players. So don't wait and download World of Warships for free using the first link in the description. And when you use my promo code FIRE, you'll get 200 doubloons, the premium battleship USS Texas, 20 times restless fire camouflage, 1 million credits, and 7 days of their premium account. Next up for today, we have what's likely the closest performance figures to AMD and NVIDIA's next-gen GPUs. In a tweet from known leaker Graymon55, he discusses GPU performance targets and how they can deviate from the final performance. As an example, he mentions that Nabi21 had a goal of 1.4 times the 2080 Ti, yet ended up being a bit slower. With that in mind, he goes over where he thinks the final performance will be for AMD's RX 7000 and NVIDIA's RTX 4000 cards. Specifically, he thinks the actual performance for Navi 31, which would make up the cards like the RX 7900 XT, will be 2.1 to 2.2 times faster than last gen, while the 4090 will be between 1.8 and 2 times faster than the 3090. And if this ends up being the case, we likely will see AMD slightly better than Nvidia's GPUs. But as I discussed in my last video, Nvidia will likely be a much bigger power hog, so it would ultimately be a big win for AMD. The real question I think will come down to ray tracing performance. That, and of course, pricing and availability. Either way, next-gen GPUs are looking more and more interesting by the day. Now, while talking next-gen cards, it looks like NVIDIA's new gaming GPUs are coming soon. In a new story found by Tom's Hardware, HW Info, the popular hardware analysis tool, just added support for a bunch of new GPUs. The new parts are included in the release notes of their beta version, and it lists the newly announced GH100, as well as the GH202. But it also mentions AD102 through 107, which are the GPUs for NVIDIA's next-gen Ada Lovelace, meaning this more or less confirms the parts are coming soon. Now, they could just be placeholders from the Lapsus League, but it mentioned a GPU that wasn't put in the HW Info update. So this is likely information they have, especially given it's supposed to be able to recognize those GPUs now. Basically, NVIDIA's next-gen RTX 4000 cards, or whatever they end up being called, are set to come fairly soon, likely later this year. Hopefully by that time, the GPU shortage will be over. And lastly for today, NVIDIA officially held their GTC conference where they announced two really interesting products. 
First up is their next-gen AI GPU set to replace their A100, and it's an absolute monster. As the leak said, it's the GH100 GPU, and it's actually built on TSMC's cutting-edge 4 nanometer process. And the full GPU comes with the 144 SMs I discussed in my last video. But instead of the typical 64 cores per SM, the GH100 gets an unbelievable 128 cores per SM, which means it comes with a whopping 18,432 cores. Cores. Now, there are a couple cut down form factors like the SXM5 board, but it even comes with 16,896 cores. It also comes with 50 megabytes of L2 cache, which is a bit more than what was leaked. But of course, this is an AI card, which isn't all that important to gamers. But there's one thing here that I think really says a lot. NVIDIA's new GPU has an eye-watering TDP of 700 watts for the SXM model, which is a whopping 300 watts higher than the GA100, and that's with it being built on TSMC's new 4 nanometer process. Basically, while it isn't the same architecture, the rumors claiming NVIDIA's RTX 4000 cards being huge power hogs are looking more and more true. And this leads me to the second huge announcement from NVIDIA's GTC conference. The company finally took the lid off their first ever CPU. It's called the Grace Superchip, and we finally know more about it. So let's talk specs. The new part is made from two CPU chips connected via their NVLink chip-to-chip -chip interconnect. The CPU comes with 144 ARM Neoverse cores, LPDDR5X memory with ECC, a whopping 900 gigabytes per second coherent interface, and some pretty bold claims on performance, though they seem to be against AMD's second-gen ROM chip. Now, Twitter user HXL found a comparison with AMD's newest Milan, but the compilers are different, so you can't really make the comparison. At the end of the day, we would definitely need to see more tests, but for NVIDIA's first real jump into CPUs, this is seriously impressive. I mean, it's at least comparable to some of AMD's best CPUs. The new chip is expected to be available in the first half of next year. So while that does it for today, are you excited for NVIDIA's foray into CPUs? Or are you just pumped for their next-gen GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!